Hey guys, this is Eric Fasquez here with a brand new tutorial for you today from designcuts.com. Now in this tutorial we're going to be using the all new Ultimate Time Saving Templates Bundle featuring a large variety of time saving professional templates ranging from branding sets and logos to social media kits, business cards, resumes, and so much more. And the items that we're going to be using from this bundle we're going to be using today to create a custom logo for a coffee shop called the Roast House Coffee Shop. And from there, we're going to be using it to apply it to some realistic mock-ups in Photoshop. So to get started, let's fire up Adobe Illustrator and get started on our logo. Now, here, all we're going to do is create our new document. And we're just going to set it up with a few parameters really quickly. So I'm just going to enter Roast House logo for the name. And then let's go ahead and change the increments from points to inches, make it about four inches wide by four inches tall. And then we're going to change the artboards from one to two. Okay, and that's all we have to do here. Now I'm just going to come down here and click create. Now once you have your new document set up, you should see both of these artboards here on your canvas. And we are going to be using both of these to get started on our logo design. So the first thing that we want to do is open up the frame EPS file from the freebies folder for this tutorial. Now the frame along with a few of these other EPS files that we're going to be using are courtesy of 7th Avenue Designs. And these are just a few of, of quite a lot of these different kind of logo elements that you guys can use to create custom logos. And you'll see in here that there's various EPS versions for you guys to choose from. So pick whichever version corresponds with the version of Illustrator that you're using. Okay, so right here I'm going to grab frame CC because I'm using Illustrator CC. But if you have CS6, 5, 4, or an older version, use EPS 8. And then go ahead and click Open. Now all we're going to do here is press Command Control plus A to select all, and then Command X to cut it, Command W to close the tab, and choose Don't Save. Now click on your first artboard and press Command F to paste it in front, and then we're just going to drag it over here in the middle. And you'll notice that as I'm moving this around, I have these pink guides showing up in my document. And those are the smart guides in Illustrator, and they just kind of help guide you along with alignment and things like that. But if you guys don't have those activated, you just want to come up to the view menu here and make sure that smart guides is checked off or you can use the keyboard shortcut command control plus U on the keyboard. Now once you have your frame in here, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. We want to add some text. So unlike Photoshop where you come up to the window menu and you can just find character right here, instead we're going to come down to where it says type and then choose character. And again, notice the keyboard shortcut here. So you can press command control plus T and that's going to bring up your character panel. Now once you've done that, press T to get your type tool, click over to the side here, and I'm going to type out the words Roast House. All right, click on your move tool up top here. Now let's just make it a little bit bigger. I'm just holding the shift key and dragging outwards from the upper right hand corner of the bounding box. And right here, I'm going to change my typeface to one of the InstaQuote fonts from Set Sale Studios. InstaQuote, and you'll see here I have my two typefaces from the freebies. Now I'm going to select InstaQuote 6 in Stones, which I believe is a very nice looking font. And then all I'm going to do is go ahead and change the size to about 47 point and press return. From here, I'm going to hold the Alt Option and Shift keys and then click and drag down to create a copy. All right, and then I'm going to press T once again, click inside here two or three times, and now type out the words Coffee House or a coffee shop rather. Okay, and then just highlight this text here. And this time let's change the font size to about 21.5. Okay, so it's gonna be quite a bit smaller. And we're just gonna place it beneath our roast house coffee here, our roast house text here. Now select the coffee shop text and then click and drag upwards while holding Alt, Option, and Shift to create another copy on top of your roast house text. Now this time, grab your type tool once again, click inside, and we're going to change this text to say Brooklyn. Now press Command Control plus A to select all the text, and now we're going to use our other typeface here, which is InstaQuote Hummingbird. All right, just for a little bit of variation there. And now for this line of text, we're going to change it to be about, maybe let's make it 24 points, grab our selection tool, maybe just move it over here so it's roughly in the center. So far, so good. And now just to keep things lined up here, I'm gonna click and drag around all these elements 
And now come over here to my properties. And if you look down a little bit, you should have these align options. If you don't have them, you can pull them up by going to the window menu and choosing align. So now you have this floating dock in addition to the options that you see over here in the properties. But once you have that, we're just going to click on this second icon here that says horizontal align center to line everything else up so that it's nice and straight. Now select your Brooklyn text, come up to the object menu, come down here to where it says envelope distort and choose make with warp. Now you want to check off this preview box so that you can see what's happening here. And you can tell that as soon as I did that, you notice this nice arc in your text. So make sure that you have horizontal checked off here. And then let's just go ahead and change the bend setting to about 35 and click OK. Now let's go ahead and open up our next freebie. Come back to the 7th Avenue Designs folder, and this time we're going to choose the Leaves EPS file and click Open. And then once that's open up, press Command Control plus A to select all, Command Control X to cut it, then Command Control W to close the tab and choose Don't Save. Press Command Control V to paste it, and let's go ahead and place this above our Brooklyn text. Now I want to reduce the size of this a little bit, so I'm going to hold Alt, Option, and Shift and just drag inwards from any of the four corners of the bounding box and then move it down here so that it, it kind of follows the curve of the Brooklyn text. Now I'm going to click on the Brooklyn text, hold shift and select the leaf, and then we're gonna tap them down a few times together just to leave a little bit of space above and below the text. Now once again, return to the freebies folder. This time grab the arrow EPS file and choose open. Command control A to select all, command control X to cut it, command control W to close the tab, choose don't save, and then command control plus V to paste it. And now, once again, I'm going to hold alt option and shift and drag inwards to scale this arrow down. Now, I wanna rotate this a bit, so let me zoom in here. And in order to do that, if you just move your cursor over any of these four corners of the bounding box, you'll notice that it changes to a curved double-sided arrow. So once you do that, hold the shift key and then just rotate it so that it's about 45 degrees. Maybe scale it down a little bit more while holding Alt, Option, and Shift and dragging inwards until your arrow follows the line of the frame. Now from here, what we're going to do is just move it over slightly, press Command, Control, plus C to copy it, Command, Control, plus F to paste the copy in front. Now it's not gonna look like anything happened because now you have two copies directly on top of each other. But here, we're gonna to go to the Object menu, choose Transform, and then Reflect. And now once you check off the preview box and select a vertical axis, you will notice that a copy, the second copy of the arrow has been flipped to mirror the first one. All right, and then just go ahead and hit OK. Now what we're gonna do is select both of these arrows and press Command G to group them together. And let's just tap it over a couple of clicks to the right so that it, it's nice and centered. Now press T once again to get your text tool. Come in here and click with the cursor. And now this time we're gonna type out the word or the letters, I should say, ESTD. Press Command A to highlight the text, come back over here to your character panel, and this time let's go ahead and change the size to about eight point. And we can also change the tracking setting here to be about 60. And that's just gonna add a little bit of space between each of the characters. Now once you've done that, we're going to move it over here, just in this nice angular part of the left side of the arrows. And then I'm going to select this, I'm gonna click on it, hold Alt, Option, and Shift, and drag a copy to the opposite side. Press T, click inside my text box, and type out 1995. Now, I wanna just deselect everything, so I'm gonna press Command, Control, plus Shift, and A on the keyboard, and then V to get my Move tool. And now I'm just gonna click and drag this over a little bit more to the right, so that the space is about the same from the edge of the text to the center of the arrows. And then once you're happy with the way that looks, click and drag around all four of these elements here and press Command, Control, plus G once again to group them together. Now, if you don't want to use that keyboard shortcut, you could simply come up to the object menu and choose Group. Currently, it's grayed out because we've just grouped it, but you can ungroup it here as well. Now, what we're going to do is zoom out, which is Command, Control, and the minus key on the keyboard. And I'm once again just going to click and drag around everything with my regular selection tool which is the black arrow here. And I'll come back to the align panel and just make sure that everything is nice and vertically centered. Now, once it is, I'm going to click off of it for a second. And it just looks like this arrow might be a little bit too far to the right. So I'm just gonna correct that so that it's visually aligned. Maybe move it up a couple of clicks as well. 
And now I can click and drag around the entire logo, press Command C, hold the space bar to get your hand tool, slide over here to the right, click on your second artboard and press Command F to paste the copy in front. So now if I zoom out, you'll see that you have a copy of your logo in the exact same place, just on our second artboard. Now what I'm going to do is use my selection tool again, click and drag around the second copy, come up to the type menu, and this time we're going to choose create outlines. And what that's going to do is convert all of that text into shapes and points. So I can no longer just come in here and modify the text. If I try to do that, nothing's going to happen. All right, because all of this has just been basically converted into a shape. So what we're going to do now is just select the roast house text, come up to the object menu, and come down here to path and choose offset path. Check off the preview box. And now type in 5px, 5 pixels, and then go ahead and click OK. And what that's doing is creating, basically adding 5 pixels around each of these letters. So it's going to give basically an expanded selection around your roast house text. So from here what I want to do is open my Pathfinder. Now I actually have it already over here next to my Align panel, but again if you guys don't see it, come up to the Window menu and choose Pathfinder from here. Now once you have the Pathfinder, you want to click on the third icon from the left on the bottom row of icons called Merge. That's going to merge all those shapes into one. Now, while that's still active, press Command Control plus X to cut it, then Command Control plus F to paste the copy in front, press I on the keyboard to get your eyedropper tool, and then click on an area of white up here on the background. Now, click on your Move tool once again, and now what we need to do is move this backwards so that we can see our original text. Now to do that, you can do it two different ways. You can come up to the object menu, choose arrange, and choose send to back, or send backward. Actually, we're gonna do send backward because that goes one step at a time, whereas send to back sends it all the way to the back. Okay, but we're gonna use the keyboard shortcut, which I think is a little bit easier. And that's just command control and the left bracket. So tap it a few times until the white shape goes behind the roast house text like this. And now if I click off of it, you'll see that there's a nice bit of padding or space between the text and the frame behind it. Now the problem is that if I were to add a color behind this, you would see the white shape, which we do not want. So let me just add a color real quick so you guys can see what I'm talking about. We don't want that white shape there. We just want it to be knocked out from this frame now. So to do that, we're first going to use our selection tool to click and drag around the entire logo here, come up to the object menu and choose expand appearance, come back up once again and choose expand. And now this time, make sure that you have object and fill both checked off and then click OK. And that's just going to expand everything just so it breaks it down even one step further into points and shapes. Now come back to the Pathfinder and click on the merge tool once again. Now from here, I'm going to press A on the keyboard to get my direct selection tool, which looks like the white arrow just below your main selection tool. And now click on any of this white area in here. Now we want to select all the other white shapes in our design so we can remove them. And to do that, once I've clicked on an area of white, I'm going to come up to the select menu, choose same, fill and stroke, and that's going to grab everything else in here that's white. And now I'll simply press delete on the keyboard to remove it. Okay, and now if I click and drag around my logo, you'll see that I just have a single color logo. So what we want to do is now create a color version of this. So first I'm going to add another artboard to the two that we already have. So I'm going to come over here to the toolbar and click on the artboard tool, which you'll see the shortcut for that is Shift and O. And then once I click on that, over here on the right side under the properties, I have this icon right next to the trash can that says New Artboard. So go ahead and click on that. Press V on the keyboard to get your selection tool, and you'll now have your third artboard. Let's zoom out a little bit by pressing Command and Control and the minus key. Press V to get your selection tool. Select your second artboard, and then click and drag a selection around the entire logo. Press Command and Control plus C to copy it. Select your third artboard, and press Command and Control plus F. So you've now got three copies of the logo, one on each artboard. Press Command A to select all and you should now have all of your logos selected. Now from here, hold the shift key and then click and drag a selection around the third logo only. So now you only have the first two selected. From here, come up to the object menu and we're going to choose lock selection. 
or you can press Command Control 2 on the keyboard to do that, so that now the only logo that's not locked is the third. Now, what I'm going to do is press A to get my direct selection tool once again. Just use the hand to get the space bar to drag around if you need to. And now click on an area of black. We'll once again come up to Select, same fill and stroke. And now what we're going to do is double click on the foreground color here. And we're going to enter the hex value B89F6F and then press return on the keyboard. Now you'll notice that it didn't change the frame. And I think that's probably because the frame may be a slightly different fill color. So let's just repeat that once again. Use the direct selection tool, click on a piece of the frame, come up to select, same, fill and stroke, and now use the eyedropper tool by pressing I on the keyboard and just sample that gold color. And now you have a single color logo. I'm going to click and drag around the entire thing and press Command G to group it together. And then go ahead and save your work. Now, for this portion of the tutorial, we're going to head over to Photoshop and we're going to download our first mock up from graphicburger.com. Now, there's a link to this in the written portion of the tutorial, which you guys can follow to grab this free mock up PSD file. Now, once you've downloaded the file, there are three scenes in the zip folder, and the one that we're going to be using is Scene 2. Okay, so open up Scene 2 in Photoshop, and then the first thing you'll notice is that there are two watermarked layers at the very top. So I'm just going to grab those and either turn them off or just delete them. And now you will see the main file that we're going to be working with. So what we're going to do is we're going to be taking our logo now from Illustrator and customizing the scene a bit and applying our logo to these packaging examples here, just to make the presentation look really nice and even more impressive. So once you've removed the watermark layers and open this file up, you'll notice that we have this folder here called tag. I'm going to click the arrow to expand the folder and then double click on the smart object inside. And now we're in the tag, but we have to go in one more layer deeper to edit this artwork. So you'll notice over here that there's another smart object, which is the second layer that says change this. And in parentheses, it says tag. Let's click on that one more time. And now you are inside of the artwork for this file. You'll notice that there's a little lock icon appearing here on the layer. That's because the layer is partially locked. Now to unlock it, I'm just going to click on this icon that says Lock Transparent Pixels. And now it is unlocked. So let's go ahead and add a new layer. And check to see that you have black as your foreground color. If you don't, simply press D on the keyboard to reset your default colors. Now press Alt, Option, and Delete, and then Command, Control, and the left bracket to fill a layer with black and move it below the Rectangle 1 layer. Now select the Rectangle 1 layer, press M on the keyboard to get to get your marquee tool, and then click and drag around all this text in the middle and just delete it. Now we're going to head back over to Illustrator just for a moment so we can grab our single color logo. I'm going to click and drag around it, press Command C to copy it, come back over to Photoshop, and press Command Control plus V on the keyboard, and paste it as a smart object. Now, as soon as you bring this in, you'll see that you have the bounding box here, so I'm going to hold Alt, Option, and Shift just drag out from any of the four corners to scale it up. Once you're happy with the size, go ahead and press return on the keyboard. Click on the rectangle one two times to bring up the layer styles. And all we're going to do here is apply a simple color overlay using the same gold color as our logo. Okay. Now we're going to add a few more elements to this. So let's go ahead and add a new layer. All right, so I'm going to add a new layer, press T on the keyboard to get my type tool, and I'm going to click up top here, and I'm just going to type out 100% organic Arabica beans. Now, I can't see what I'm doing here because the text is black, so I'm just going to click and highlight all of it, and now click on this little fill box up here, and just sample that gold color again. Okay, now grab your move tool, and we can just slide this over here, so that it's nice and centered. Now press T and click inside here to highlight the text. Come up to Window and choose Character to bring up your character panel. Now we have the right font, which is InstaQuote Hummingbird, but we want to change the size a little bit. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller, maybe somewhere around 44.5, and then go ahead and press Return. Now from here, you just want to check to make sure that your tracking is set to about negative 30, which it is and that's looking pretty good. Now press U on the keyboard 
And that's going to give you your rectangle tool. And all we're going to do here is change a few settings really quick. So right now I have a green stroke. So I'm just going to click on that color here. Choose none, the white box with the red stripe through it. Click on the fill. And now I want to change the fill color. So I'm just going to click on this little color spectrum icon here in the top right. And now you'll see that your cursor changes to the eyedropper. So now I can just click on any area of gold in my document and I will have that same color. Now press OK and then just grab your move tool. Press U once again. Now we're just going to click and drag out a thin rectangular selection. All right. Click on the move tool so you can see it. And I'm just going to use the arrow keys and maybe hold shift and tap the down arrow one or two times just so I can try and space this out so we have it in between our logo and our text. Now I'll press Command J to duplicate that rectangle, then press Command T to do a free transform. Click and hold the Shift key and drag it down here below your logo. Now from here, go ahead and press Return to apply the changes, and that's looking pretty good. Now I want to select the top rectangle layer, hold the Shift key, and select the Vector Smart Object layer, which is our logo. And now I'm just going to tap it down a few times so it's nice and centered. All right, and then you can also come up here and you'll have some align tools in Photoshop so that you can align everything horizontally. Now, once you've done that, go ahead and either delete or just turn off the visibility of the black background layer that we added and press Command Control plus S to save the file and now Command Control W to close the window. And you should see your artwork applied to the tag here. All right, now press Command Control S one more time to save it, and then Command Control W to close out of the window. And you'll now be back in your main document where you can see that our logo and branding has been applied to this tag. Next, let's go ahead and open up the envelope folder here. Double click on it to go inside the smart object. And now we'll do the same thing and double click on this second layer here that says change this. Go inside and just choose, you know, cancel if you're having any font issues. And all I'm going to do is turn off the visibility of these layers. Now come back over to Illustrator, select your logo, copy it, come back to Photoshop, press Command Control V to paste it, paste it as a smart object, hold Alt Option and Shift and drag out to size it up. And now we're going to move this one a little bit lower, somewhere about there, and then press Return on the keyboard. Now double click on this layer to bring up the layer styles, check off Color Overlay, and this time for the color, let's change it to Solid Black. Click OK twice and now save it by pressing Command Control S and Command Control W to close the tab. Now I want to make this a little bit larger than it is. So if I need to go back, I can just double click on that smart object again, press Command Control plus T to do a free transform, and then I'm just going to hold Alt Option and Shift and scale it up. You can tap it up a few times as well, save it again, close the window, and there you go. That size is looking much better. Now I want to add back a border that was here before. So let me just go back one more time just so I can add that border back. Okay, and you can kind of see what's on each of these different layers. But I just want this rectangle one layer to be turned back on. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and just get rid of the other layers and save it one more time. And there you go. Now press Command S once again to save this file and then Command Control W to close it once it's done saving, and you should now see your artwork applied to the envelope. Now let's go ahead and attack the bag here. So I'm going to open the bag, that group folder, double click on the smart object, and now double click on the top layer here, the smart object that says change this. All right, and very similar to how we modified our tag, we're going to do the same thing for the bag. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this up really quick by pressing Command Control V to paste my logo once again. Size it up here in the center. Okay, turn off the visibility of that rectangle one layer. And now let's just go ahead and add our text once again like we did before when we typed out 100% organic Arabica beans. Press Command A to select all the text. And this time let's just go ahead and manually size up the text here in the character panel. It's maybe about 50 points or a little bit larger, 55. Click on the color fill, sample the gold, just move it over here towards the center. Press U on the keyboard to get your rectangle tool. And now just click and drag out 
another horizontal bar. Press Command-J to duplicate it, Command-T to do a free transform. Click, hold the Shift key, and slide it down. And now select the top layer, hold Shift, and select your logo layer. Come back to the Align options and choose the Align Horizontal Centers once again. And now let's just give it a little bit more room to this bottom divider here. There we go. Now select all of these and just tap them down a few times together and press command Control s and command Control w to close the tab. Now you can kind of see where everything is falling and lining up. Now I think at this point I may want to move some of these things a little bit closer together. So let me just come back in here. Okay, what we're going to do is select the bottom rectangle, tap it up a few times, hold the command Control key and select the logo vector smart object layer. Tap that up maybe once or twice. And then let's grab our text here, tap that down once or twice while holding the shift key. And then while that layer is still selected, hold command and select the rectangle just above it, which is this top divider. So you've got both of those layers selected together and then press the down arrow while holding the shift key one more time. Now let's go ahead and grab our logo, press command control plus T to do a free transform and drag outwards a little bit while holding alt option and shift just to make it a little bit larger and then we'll just move that bottom divider down a little bit more so the spacing is about even from the top of the logo to the first bar and the bottom logo to the bottom bar. Now press Command Control plus S, Command Control plus W to close it, and you should now see the updated artwork. Now everything is looking good in terms of the size, but it looks a little too far to the left, so let's go back in one more time, select all those layers, maybe just tap it over to the right a couple of times, just so we can get that nice and centered. And that's looking pretty good. Now press Command S to save it, Command W to close it, and you now have each of these items with your logo and branding applied. Now let's go ahead and customize this scene a bit more to try and make an even more unique and custom looking scene. Now for this next part, you're going to need to download a second mock-up template, and you will find the link for that in the written portion of the tutorial as well. And once you've downloaded it, again, there are a few scenes in there, but the one that we are concerned with is mockup to PSD. Let's go ahead and open that up and then just scrap the watermark file on top so that we can see what we're dealing with here. Now, what we're going to do is open up the base group folder here, and inside you'll see another subfolder called coffee, and that just contains these coffee beans. So let's go ahead and move our tab to the side here. And I'm just going to click and drag this coffee folder into my main document. Now I'll press command control in the right bracket a few times to move this up in the layers palette until it's just above the tag group folder. Press command control plus T on the keyboard to do a free transform. Hold the shift key and drag inwards from any of the four corners to scale it down while constraining the proportions. And then I'm just going to drag this down and place it so that it's kind of overlapping the bag here. All right, because we want it to look like there's a few coffee beans here in front of the bag. Now, once you've done that, we're gonna add an adjustment layer with a clipping mask. So hold the Alt Option key, and now click on the adjustment layer icon down here at the bottom of the layers palette, and choose Hue Saturation. Now, here we're gonna check off this option that says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask because we only want this layer to affect the coffee group folder. And now we're just gonna move the saturation slider to the left until it's set to about negative 15 or 16, just so that it kind of matches the overall tone and vibrancy of the rest of our image. Now let's come back to the other mockup file that we have here for a second, collapse this base folder, turn it off, so that all we have left are the master adjustments group folder and this BG group folder. So I'm gonna hold the command key and select both of those so they're both selected together, and then hold command, control, and the shift key at the same time, Click and drag both of these into your main document. And now I'm going to collapse this bag folder. And now click and drag these two group folders all the way down to the bottom of the layers palette so that they're just on top of this original solid color BG layer. Now, while you still have those two folders selected, press Command Control T on the keyboard to do a free transform, Command Control plus zero to fit this to your screen. And now hold the Alt Option and Shift keys and drag inwards from any of the four corners of the bounding box until the width matches the width of your document. Now go ahead and press return on the keyboard to apply the changes and now hold the shift key and just tap both of these up a few times so that we can get the top edge of this table 
a little bit behind our products here, all right? Because we want to create a convincing looking perspective for our design. Now, once you've done that, go ahead and press C on the keyboard to get your crop tool. Now, there's just one quick option that I want to point out to you guys up here, and that's in the top toolbar. Make sure that this option that says delete cropped pixels is not checked. So that way you can always go back if you mess up your crop or if you want to add more of the image. Now, once you've done that, I'm just going to click and drag down from the top and then move your cursor over either the left or the right handle here, hold the Alt Option key and drag inwards, and it'll come in from both sides at the same time. Okay, and all we're doing here is cropping our image so that the focus can remain on the products. Now go ahead and press return on the keyboard to apply the changes and give it a moment until it finishes with the crop. Now, before we move on, there's one other folder that I want to get rid of here, and that's the effect folder at the very top of the layers palette. We don't really need that. We're actually going to be applying some effects of our own. So you can get rid of that, and you can also get rid of this BG layer on the very bottom. Let's just come into this BG folder here, and you'll see that you have lighting, texture, and BG color. Select the texture subfolder, and then click on the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette to add a new layer. And now press the letter M on the keyboard to get your rectangular marquee tool. Now what I'm going to do is click and drag from the very top left corner down to about the top edge of this table here in the background. All right, so we have a nice big rectangular selection. Now click on your foreground color and let's enter the hex value 56392A, which is this nice kind of saturated brown color here. Click OK and then press Alt, Option, and Delete on the keyboard to fill your selection with the foreground color. Press Command, Control, plus D to deselect it, and now change the blending mode from Normal to Multiply. Okay, and that's just gonna add this nice deep tone to the background of this wall. What we're gonna do from here is hold the Command, Control key, click on the layer thumbnail icon for this layer that we just created, and that's going to activate a selection around it. Add another new layer just above that layer, Press G on the keyboard to get your gradient tool, and then check these settings out on the top toolbar here. Now we want to make sure that we have a solid to transparent fill like I do here, and that you also have a linear gradient selected. And once you do, all you're going to do is move your cursor down here below the selection, click, hold the shift key, and drag upwards to create a linear gradient from the bottom up. Now press Command, Control plus D to deselect it and change the blending mode once again from normal to multiply. And that's going to create this nice dark fade from the bottom behind the table here up. Now let's go ahead and add a few more options here to our overall image to finish it up and add a little bit of polish. All right, so select the very top hue saturation adjustment layer here, and now come back down to the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. Now, unlike the previous hue saturation adjustment layer, this one is going to be overall on top of the entire image. So all we're going to do with this one is just boost the saturation a little bit, maybe somewhere between 8 to 10. Come back down to the adjustment layer icon, and this time choose curves. Now we're going to add a point in the center of the grid here. Just move it down and to the right slightly so that the input is set to about 140, and the output is going to be set to around 120, let's say 121. Okay, and that's just going to add a little bit of contrast to the overall image. Now there's one more adjustment layer icon that we're going to add, so come back down once again, and this time choose Color Balance. Now for this part, all we're going to do is select the Cyan to Red slider, click and drag it over to the left until it's set to around negative 16 or so, just to take out some of that red, because it has an overall reddish tint on the whole thing that we don't really want. We want to get a nice, normal, and kind of balanced looking tone. Alright, so even negative 14 looks pretty good. Now, let's add one more layer here on top of everything. Press G on the keyboard once again to get your gradient tool. And now what I'm going to do is click and drag from below my image here on the bottom. Click, hold the shift key, and drag up. And now change the blending mode of this layer from normal to multiply. And let's go ahead and do the same from the lower left corner up towards the center and the lower right corner up towards the center. So we can create this kind of nice vignette effect. Now I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command J just to intensify it a little bit. And then let's just maybe merge these layers together. So select the top layer, hold Shift and select the layer below, and then press Command Control plus E to merge them together. 
And you'll have to just change the blending mode once again from normal to multiply. Now let's make it a little bit bigger here. So press Command, Control, plus T to do a free transform. Hold Alt, Option, and Shift, and just drag outwards slightly. You move it up a little bit, and then grab this top handle on the bounding box. Maybe just crunch it down a little bit, just so we can create this nice vignette effect along the bottom of our image. Now, once you've done that, guys, you've created this nice custom branded scene in Photoshop using your custom Roast House Coffee Shop logo. So this was kind of a, a fun one. I know that we're using a lot of different elements here. We had our, our different fonts, our vector elements, our different mockups. But it's really cool once you, you know, have a logo and some branding to work with to discover all the different ways that you can create some fun and interesting mockups. And these kind of presentations really help take your work to the next level. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching this tutorial. Hopefully you've discovered some new tips and tricks along the way. And we can't wait to see what kind of stuff you guys come up with on your own using these techniques as well as the full bundle. Now there's still plenty of time to check out the Ultimate Time Saving Templates Bundle, which I strongly encourage you guys to do because it's just going to help you speed up your workflow so much. And there's a ton of great stuff in there. So be sure to check that out. Once again, this is Eric Vasquez here for Design Cuts. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.